Here we're going to demonstrate how to add additional storage to your existing Solera simulator. Let's open up the Solera VM configuration and you can see it starts off with your default 40 gig um, VMDK that uh, is there by default when you create your Solera VM for the first time. If we open up Solera Manager, and by the way, if you need to see how to set up the Solera Sim in the first place, just go to virtualgeek.typepad.com um, and look at the initial Solera 101. Let's log in as NAS Admin and NAS Admin, which opens up the Solera Manager GUI. One thing that's notable, um, we haven't talked about it here in the 101 or 201, is you can actually use the Solera Manager GUI to actually manage many Soleras. Uh, something that perhaps we'll do in a later 301 module. So as the uh, Solera Manager GUI opens up, we're going to navigate to the uh, Storage Pools section in the tree. So expand out Storage, and then click on Pools. Again, an interesting thing to point out if you haven't tried already, try right-clicking on anything there in the storage tree. It's a really neat, fast way to do uh, given tasks. But if we zoom in here, you'll see that currently there's two storage pools, a 4.8 gig pool and then this 19.3 gig pool. Switching over to uh, the console, we're just going to quickly log in here. We're going to log in as root NAS admin um, and shut down the VM in the first place because what we want to do is we want to add an additional uh, VMDK or incremental storage. So let's go to the Solera VM that's now shut down. First thing, good idea generally to take a ESX snapshot. Um, I personally would advise anyone that's using the Solera VM, you know, take liberal um, ESX snapshots so that you can go back if you make a mistake or, or anything along those lines. Now let's add a new VMDK. So you can see that currently there's one. We'll select add add a new hard disk, we'll create a new virtual disk or VMDK file, and then we're going to pick a size. You can pretty well pick whatever size you want here. Um, I've had the best experience using multiple smaller ones, so rather than creating a, you know, a two terabyte uh, VMDK, which is actually the maximum, but, you know, let's say a hundred gigabyte VMDK, I'd create several smaller ones. Once that's done, let's boot up that um, Solera again. And now let's actually configure that additional storage. Let's log in once again as root. Just think of it this way. When you log in as root, you're modifying things that are core control station attributes. Um, so for example, here you're going to see that we're going to need to fdisk the new device, which in this case is SDB, uh, actually WAC dev. Um, SDB. Um, the actual device name is going to vary depending on how many disk devices you've added. The second one will be SDB, the first one was SDA, and so on and so forth. Hit P to create a new partition, uh, sorry, N for a new partition, then P for a primary partition, then 1, and then uh, write the partition table, which basically exits from FDisk. This isn't a Solera thing, this is just, you know, how you uh, originally partitioned the new disk device that's been presented here to the VM. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a mount point. So let's make a directory. In this case I'm going to choose to call it mount and we'll create another directory, uh, a subdirectory for this particular device uh, which is now SDB1 because it's partition number one. And you can see we've got this new directory. Fantastic. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, format the disk with uh, uh, you know the uh, file system so quickly format the disk we'll do a little bit of a time warp here because this takes a few minutes and here you can see the device is now formatted and we're pretty well done now what we need to do is just edit the uh, um, FS tab to just make sure that this file system is always mounted to that mount directory whenever this uh, VM gets rebooted. You know, again, I know that this isn't, uh, uh, you know, intuitive perhaps to people who aren't Unix folks, but I just open VI, 
you hit I to insert, and then you type in the device in the first column, hit tab, do the mount point, and the next one, auto basically says, uh, uh, you know, mount it via uh, using auto, it's always going to mount whenever you uh, run certain commands, and then mount it with the uh, all the set of default parameters, and don't even worry about what the zero, zero mean here. Then what you do is hit escape, hit the word, hit colon, and then W for write and Q to exit. Mount-A mounts all of the file systems that are listed in FS tab. And so now if we go and we take a look, you'll notice that we've now actually mounted that uh, new formatted file system. Fantastic. So, log out, you know, and then, um, you know, I've logged out here and I'm logging back in. You can see I did these all at slightly different times. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to type this export NASDB equals WAC NAS. The other way of doing this is to log in as the NAS admin user and then type SU. You achieve the same effect. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're actually going to configure this Solera SIM to start using that storage. So the first thing we do is we run this command, NAS SBIN setup underscore clarion dash init. And what this does is that a Solera always has got a certain amount of back-end storage that's being served up to it. In an integrated unit, this is via integrated storage set up behind it. And you'll notice that it says, I found this clarion with this long string. That string is the serial number of both the Clarion and the Solera in the Solera simulator here. Um, and you'll notice that it says we've got two disk enclosures, each one with 15 drives. The 146 is the size of the drive, and then the number underneath is the RAID group number. So here what we're going to do is we're going to say, I want to add a new disk enclosure, and then the disk enclosure by default gets a number. Now you'll notice that the task failed. The reason that it failed is that there's a set of files that represent the back end in the Solera simulator and they're stored in these two XML files and you can see that the XML file actually contains the old serial number. When we clone the VM the serial number changed so we need to change these files so just copy them both the backend underscore status and also backend underscore resume and just copy the file so that they have the uh, proper new serial number um, uh, in the file name. If you're wondering what the actual number is, you can see it in the error from the previous step. So now let's rerun the command, and this time it's going to work. You only need to do that step once, once you've cloned a VM. Okay, great. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say, one, I want to create a new enclosure. Let's accept the default here and the default disk size and fiber. You could make them ATA if you want. It's not going to make a performance difference because these are, in essence, virtualized disks. Um, and you'll notice that up at top, it's now added uh, another enclosure with all this UB unbound. So let's hit 3 that says continue to the disk group template menu. When you do that, you have a lot of choices. You can uh, do a specific configuration, but let's just pick one for the standard RAID 5 configuration. You could pick RAID 10 or RAID 6, all sorts of stuff like that. But you notice that that automatically configures it with a hot spare and some RAID groups. The next step is it says, where should I put the disks? And you put in the mount point you created earlier. Then it says, how much space do I want to use? The default is everything. And then do you want to zero out all the data, which for now just say no. There's a slight performance benefit of zeroing everything, but it takes a really long time to do in practice. So here you can see that it's you know, creating the enclosures, it's creating the disk devices. Uh, when you use the template, it will create a hot spare in this case, as well as a RAID 4 plus 1 and a RAID 8 plus 1 set. Again, you can specify that manually if you want, but uh, for the purpose of this, I'm just accepting the defaults. And you'll notice here that now we've got the 201, which is the hot spare in in the first drive, and then we've got a RAID group and then another RAID group. Okay, so we're pretty well done with this step. Later on, we're going to add more storage to the Solera in the Solera config.